Ugh. The world is a vampire. That's what I first thought when I heard Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. Initially. Then one of my friends at the time forced melancholy and the infinite sadness on me. He said, you're going to borrow this and you're going to listen to it all the way through. And if you're still complaining about Billy Corgan by the end, ah, you won't be. And he was right. Not only is that album one of my favorite long double albums ever, I became more and more enthralled with Billy Corgan's approach. You say, really? What was initially the most irritating thing about him became one of the most empowering things for me as a vocalist. Yes, especially in light of my love for other singers at the time, like Lane Staley and Chris Cornell. It's the nose. He is one of the most chronically and constantly nasal singers out there. But if you know what to listen for, it will unlock so many amazing things. Mixed voice high notes, screams. It's not always just in the same place nasal. He's got multiple voices within his range of textures that give major things away. Hold you up to the flames. He's moving that around. Hold you up to the flames. There's also this element of whisper versus harshness that comes into play. Even though, even though, I, no, 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 you're not, nah, nah. I suppose, I suppose, hear the contrast there? Oh my cool and cool and oh, like old Joe. Here's why this is so powerful, especially when you combine it with your other influences. This section of Burden in My Hand. Crack a smile and cut your mouth. That vocal would not be what it is without the nasality, without the nose. And it's the same posture in a different voice, in a different range as Billy Corgan. It's not crack a smile and cut your mouth. No, that sounds bland. It's crack. It's quack, 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 crack. Crack a smile and cut your mouth and drown in alcohol. That moving in and out of nasality is what gives that line its charm. And it does the same thing in Billy's delivery. And took my shelter in that pain. Having this consciousness of movement makes it easier for me to get into my grit because I'm not locking myself into one throat position. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. And you can hear it in Billy's voice too. This nasality is an accessory. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. What will happen if you embrace this? Despite it makes it easier to scream rage, and abandon into different parts of your voice. Do you hear how desperate and disconnected and vulnerable that scream was? Ooh, but you can't get stuck in it. Stuck in anything is not good. Now I'm naked. Now I'm naked. It's the contrast and movement in and out of nasality that makes it work. And that's what I didn't hear when I was sort of passively listening to Billy in the beginning. For just one more show. For just one more show. What do you got? What do you got? Lots of things are coming out in my voice kind of by accident, just by embracing what I'm hearing him do. That's three very different textures in one line. He's doing it, I put it in my own voice, I do it. Embrace the nose rule. Make it a point to move your resonance and placement in and out of your nose. Don't be concerned about being nasal. Be nasal on purpose and see what kind of flavors come out of your voice. If you enjoy my unconventional coaching approach and you would like to unlock more things with your own voice and discover what it can really do, click the link below and join my free voice course. And if you'd like to learn more about how nasality can be a tool instead of an obstacle to a great voice, try this video.